Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 79 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case highlighting the hybrid approach to a right coronary artery chronic total occlusion. The patient was a young man who presented with um, unstable angina and was found to have a CTO of the right coronary artery. It was actually a multi-level CTO with one occlusion in the mid-segment and then a second occlusion in the distal segment. And then he also had significant disease in the middle AD, had an ulcerated plaque in the left main, but no significant disease in the circumflex. The patient was offered coronary bypass graft surgery. However, he declined. And that is why he was referred for PCI of the LAD as well as the right coronary artery CTO. During engagement with two eight French guide catheters, there was severe pressure dampening on the right coronary artery. That is why the dual injection was actually performed with injection only through the left main. That demonstrated that the distal vessel was of good size. However, the distal cap was close to the bifurcation of the PDA and PLV. The length, there was about two occlusions, but about 50 millimeters total. And there were septal collaterals supplying the posterior descending artery. Therefore, the plan was to first treat the LAD and then do undergrade wire escalation for the right coronary, followed by undergrade dissection reentry and retrograde if those two approaches failed. The LAD did have a large septal branch. It was almost like a dual LAD system. And that is why a wire was placed into that large septal branch. The lesion in the LAD was predilated. And then a stent was placed in the middle LAD, providing a nice result with continued flow into the large septal branch. There was a debate about treating the left main ulcerated lesion. However, intravascular ultrasound did not show any significant luminal impeachment, and we thought of observing at the time. We then tried to recanalize the right coronary. We performed undergrade wire escalation through a micro 14 microcatheter and a pilot 200 guide wire. The wire did advance, however, contralateral injection showed that the wire was actually in an acute marginal branch. During attempts of crossing, the wire went subindimal, and eventually we used a knuckle technique to advance the guide wire to the distal right coronary artery. We then advanced a stingray balloon to the distal right coronary in the horizontal portion and then attempted re-entry using multiple techniques including the stick and swap, double blind stick and swap and the bobsled trying in different locations in the distal right coronary artery. Part of the challenge there was that the distal RCA was very diffusely diseased and as a result it was challenging to re-enter. Unfortunately, during those re attempts, there was compression of the distal true lumen because of subintimal hematoma. And now essentially there is um, very little flow past the distal bifurcation of the PDA and the PLV. In an attempt to drain the, the hematoma, we did the STRO technique or subintimal transcatheter withdrawal. A 2.5 millimeter over the wire balloon was inflated next to the subintimal system and then aspiration was performed. We clearly have a large subintimal space here as you can see from the distance between the balloon and the undergrade uh, system, the stingray balloon. Unfortunately this was unsuccessful and as a result we decided to try retrograde crossing. We had some difficulty entering into the septal branch However, that was successful after using the twin pass torque microcatheter, which is a new dual lumen microcatheter that has good um, uh, torque control by turning the proximal head, you can direct the exit point of the over the wire lumen. And by doing that, we were then able to advance a guide wire into that septal branch and then perform surfing. This was with a Caravel microcatheter and a Sion guide wire. The wire went into various uh, branches that was unsuccessful. It was redirected several times. And then eventually a pathway was found where the wire nicely flew down following into the distal right coronary artery. However, the challenge we subsequently had was that the caravel would not cross the septal. And this is a not uncommon situation 
that can be approached with different ways. The first one is to try hard to deliver the microcatheter, for example, by rotating it, which was tried in our case that did not work, by increasing support, which in its simplest form can be done by putting forward pressure into the left main guide. A third option is to dilate the collateral with a small 1.2 or 1.5 millimeter balloon at low pressure. If that doesn't work, we can use a new microcatheter, a shorter, maybe a 135 centimeter, which has potentially better torque transmission, or a different type, for example, switch from a Corsair to a Caravel or a Caravel to a Micro 14, although the Caravel is a fairly low profile microcatheter. Another approach is to increase the undergrade guide catheter support by using anchoring, or if the microcatheter is very close to the distal target vessel, is to remove the wire that has crossed the, the collateral, advance a stiffer wire that can offer more support. Alternatively, we can attempt a retrograde true to true crossing, or use the retrograde wire as a marker for undergrade crossing, or just abandon this collateral altogether and try another collateral. In this particular case, we tried to deliver the caravel using balloon dilation, using forward pressure on the guide, however we were unable to do so. And then since the occlusion length seemed to be short, we attempted to perform reverse card with the retrograde Sion wire, which was however unsuccessful, we were unable to advance the sewer wire more proximal, even when we advanced an undergrade 8 French guide liner catheter. We performed dilation of the microchannel of the collateral, septal collateral using a 1.25 balloon. And then following that, we were then able, with forward pressure into the left main guide and a lot of rotation, to finally advance the caravel microcatheter through the septal, there appeared to be a acute bend that was precluding the catheter from moving further down. But again, with uh, prolonged attempts, we were finally able to make that turn, and then the caravel was advanced uh, all the way. There it is, it just jumped, and then it was advanced all the way to the distal right coronary. The Sion wire was removed, a pilot 200 was inserted, and then we were very easily able to advance the Pilot 200 retrograde into the undergrade guide catheter. It was clearly a short occlusion here and having a stiffer wire with a short and uh, not very acute angle tip, we were able to cross into the undergrade guide catheter. The wire was externalized and then after predilatation, we were able to place two stents in the mid and proximal right coronary artery. That provide a nice result, although there remains significant disease in the distal right coronary just before the bifurcation of the posterior lateral and the posterior descending artery. We did perform an inflation with a 1.5 millimeter balloon, and following that, we were able to restore TM3 flow into both branches, getting an excellent result. We then uh, debated about placing an additional stand into the proximal LED in the left main. However, that ulcer appeared worsen, and we ended up placing an additional stand. By doing that, we then obtained a nice final result with restoring TM3 flow in the left system. There are the final shots, excellent result in the left main and the LED, and also an excellent result was achieved in the right coronary artery. This was a long case, took 4 hours, 82 minutes of fluoro time, 3.2 gray, and 400 of contrast, but the patient did have an excellent recovery and a resolution of his symptoms. So in summary, this case provides several lessons. The first is that uh, when one strategy does not work in crossing a CTO, changing to an alternative strategy is an important technique and has a lot of power, and that's exactly what was done in our case. When we have a retrograde approach, one challenge can be if there is disease in the donor vessel, which should be treated first before attempting to go retrograde, because otherwise significant ischemia and hemodynamic instability can occur. There is an example of what to do when the retrograde microcatheter does not cross, 
In our case, a combination of dilating the septal with a small balloon and providing a little more forceful support of the undergrade of the retrograde guide catheter allowed us to cross with a caravel down the vessel. And finally, we try to minimize as much as we can the stent length because the distal vessel will grow eventually after there is restoration of undergrade flow. Thank you.